KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Lambda Weekly. I'm David Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and our guests today are Saul Reyes. He's the Equality Texas Vice Chair. Welcome Saul and Bob Shimon. He is the president, president okay, of no longer Collin County Gay and Lesbian Alliance. It is now called the Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas. That's correct. Gay Lesbian <laughs> Serving larger constituency. G- 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 Galen, G- G- Galen six. North Texas. Galen North Texas. Um, Monday is going to be um, lobby day in Austin for the gay and lesbian community. For Coll- the LGBT community. For the LGBT, LGBT community. community. Correct. Uh, and Q community and I community and, mm-hmm. and A community. Mm-hmm. Meaning allies who want to go are welcome. Uh, you're running a bus down there, Bob. Yes, we're taking a 56-passenger bus from Collin County to uh, Austin, which is uh, pretty astounding to me. I think a few years ago we would have thought that uh, I thought we were taking a minivan, but uh, my vice president she just, she got oh, I got a 56-passenger bus. We have to fill it up, so we did, and you did, and it's full. We so did. It's totally full. I don't have anything to sell today. Ah, okay. So <laughs> right. you're not here to, to hawk seats. Nope. Um, I'm, on, I'm on the bus. Ex- yes, Patty I'm got really the last seat. Excited to be on the bus because it's it's great uh, because wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? I'm on the bus. No, 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 Bob. She actually uh, took the last seat of the bus. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Patty is last. <laughs> It's that very, very fitting. It <laughs> is fitting. It is fitting. You got the last. I love that. I love that. That makes the day. Um, <laughs> let's ha- let's talk a little bit about lobbying. I went down last time. Have you ever lobbied, Patty? Yes. Um, in Austin and in DC. And, and have you lobbied? Yes. Yeah. I'm and this is new to me. But it's new to you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do our little lobbying 101 here. Sure. So what does um, lobbying entail? Well, lobby, first of all, entails, you know, if really personalizing the your story, getting to meet your representatives, uh, you know, regardless of their, um, you know, Democrat, Republican, get to meet them, identifying you're the constituent and uh, telling your story. And so you really personalize it and uh, have the emotion tied to, to what our um, topic would be about. And what's great about Lobby Day, what Quality Texas does is that we have, when you register online, you're put, you're assigned to a team. And we try to put those teams within your zip code, your county, and you'll go visit reg- uh, legislators and senators and representatives in your um, area. And I'm a, I'm a team lead. Are oh, you a team lead? Great. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Excellent. And so it is. It is takes a lot of the fear away from it because I know when I uh, first joined Equality Texas four years ago, I was out of Amarillo. And, you know, I've never really been in the congressman's office to talk to. And so mm-hmm. when I first attended Lobby Day, I was a little bit scared, a little bit apprehensive. What am I going to say? Mm-hmm. 
but as a team you're in there the teams are about five to six people and you go in there you there, there's a great training that morning that we do when you first after you register uh, and you do go through a whole training for about an hour and then you'll go as a group and you've got your your talking points on there and so it was just a fascinating experience to get in there and just tell your story tell them who you are that you are it, you know part of their uh, district mm -hmm. um, wh what's your experience with, lo with lobbying Patty um, well, it's, um, I've done a lot more lobbying in D.C. than I have in Austin, actually. Um, you did, did. Yeah. You did Washington well, lobby. Well, I, I was on the... We only go to Austin. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, well, I'm just, just saying. I mean, it was like when I was active in North Jersey. Was, yeah. Uh, but, okay, so in Washington, it's the same thing, though. Same it idea. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. And you go in, and, and particularly if you're speaking to someone who is representing you, you are a constituent, mm -hmm. and you have a natural place in their listening ear. Mm -hmm. And they should be listening to you because that's your, you live in their district and vote, vote for whoever serves you, right? Um, so um, getting getting in front of them is really important. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get in front of somebody who works in the office, a legislative aide or Correct. or someone else. You don't actually get that person, that representative's ear uh, personally. But um, you know, it's a, it can be a really power empowering and powerful experience, not just for. The right representative, but also you know, for everyone in the Patty, group. you're not coming across at all. Really? Yeah. So I'll share with you. Okay, why don't you two share? <laughs> well, I was just, just saying that in in terms of lobbying, it can be a really powerful experience or an em empowering experience as well, not just for the representative, but also for the people who are doing the lobbying. Right. You know, and, and I had one experience in, in D.C. with my, my sister came along who's straight. She had an HRC sticker on her car, though, for many years. And, um, and that was just so great listening to her tell her story about how it hurts her that I don't have full equality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm getting kind of choked up about it. But it's, it is a very personal thing to sure. talk to your representative because they do have that power to make change. Now, my experience last time, last time we were lobbying specifically for an anti-bullying bill. This time, and we're going to go through what some of these laws are that have been proposed, and it runs the gamut, and it is exciting what the legislative yes. agenda is this time, but last time it was, it was bullying. So I followed a group of kids from Equality Texas. First office we go into is Florence Shapiro's. She's the head of the Education Committee, um, and hasn't been exactly the most friendly to the gay and lesbian community, goodbye, good riddance, because uh, she's gone this session. But, but she was on our side on this. One of the kids talked about having been beaten up in a bathroom at West Plano High School, and then the, um, the principal, he did everything he was supposed to. He reported it. His mother came in, talked to the principal a week later. Um, he goes back to the principal, asks the principal, has anything been done? Because he identified who it was who beat him up. Mm -hmm. And the principal said, well, you know, you really kind of brought that on yourself. He had, he had that state senator in tears. <laughs> she was just, he had her eating out of yeah. his hand. It was great. And she voted with us. Right. So, uh, as did every senator. Uh, so, so the idea, you talk to Republicans and Democrats, uh, three quarters, th two thirds to three quarters of the House voted for the lobbying bill. Now, it was a compromise bill, and yes. that's okay. Politics is about compromise. It's not my way or nothing. It's it, compromise, and um, uh, not only did uh, did three quarters of that or two thirds of three quarters, but a hundred percent of the Senate. That was great. Exactly. That was we're, great. We were, were thrilled when we were able to get that passed. And, and, uh, um, Bob, do you have? Uh, w you were assigned to a group, weren't you? Uh, yes. Okay. So, what are you going to be lobbying about? Do you know yet? Um, I believe I'm going to be lobbying um, about non-discrimination in the workplace. Um, okay. And give us a little bit of your background. What do you yeah. do? I'm a vice president with Cinemark Theaters, mm -hmm. and I've been uh, living in Texas since 2006. I lived in California my whole life prior to that, so it was quite a change coming from San Francisco uh, and uh, 20 years in the Bay Area. San Francisco, Plano? Plano. I, very, very similar. Uh, they, they are similar. <laughs> San Francisco has more like hills. Water. Yeah. <laughs> San Francisco has, other than that, what's the difference in... in it's pretty much the same, I think, otherwise. Yeah. No, um, 
It's 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 dramatically different. And I wasn't very politically active in California because, quite honestly, we felt like everything kind of had been done for us, and there mm -hmm. were certainly plenty of people out there um, trying to do more things. Um, and I came to Plano, and I felt like there was this opportunity um, to make change. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a great group of people up there who most people think are kind of invisible. I mean, mm -hmm. there it's not uh, it's not Oakland. You don't walk down the street and say that person's gay, that person's gay. These people are in relationships and have kids and. Um, they're living a suburban life, and it's a little bit different out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been great. My uh, my background coming uh, with Cinemark Theaters has been uh, has been uh, eye opening because I came from a company that had domestic partner benefits, and at the time Cinemark uh, did not, although they were considering it. Um, and so over the last over uh, about three years ago now, I think it was, uh, we added domestic partner benefits. We have transgender protection. <laughs> um, we have. Um, um, a, a great rating um, from HRC, um, and it's really it's it will always was a good place to work, but they've really focused on those issues and uh, and uh, done a really good job making sure that they were uh, e open on equal always. I, th I think it's interesting though that you didn't specifically mention that they have a non-discrimination policy mm -hmm. because you're looking at things beyond that. Yes. And one of the things we do not have in the state of Texas is a basic non-discrimination protection in the law for LGBT people. So right. you could be fired simply because you're gay or someone thinks you're gay and I think or you, transgender. You tell people that and I think that they're shocked. I mean they really, people don't expect that they, that would be something that you could legally fire somebody for. Um, and most good people, I mean, it's not like that happens all the time. Most good people wouldn't consider hiring, firing somebody just because mm -hmm. of who they were. Right. But there are those few. <laughs> I mean, you should have that protection. Yeah. It's not something that uh, uh, you should face in the workplace. Right. There's, there's. But I think it's really telling, too, that most Americans and most Texans believe we already have that protection. Mm -hmm. And, and so if they already think it's there, and they think it's appropriately there, why is it so difficult to get it passed and make it real? I mean, because all these people are there. They already believe it's there. They support it. Um, they, we're going to talk about the Equality Texas polling. Correct. And uh, I mean, an overwhelming majority of Texans believe we should have that protection. Why is it so difficult it's to pass? Fun. Pandering! <laughs> <laughs> Pandering well, it, well, it's one, yeah, it's always found it's one of those things that people just accept, they just thought we already had it, that you couldn't discriminate you couldn't fire someone for being gay and when you are able to do the education side of it uh, what Equality Foundation does is educating on the issues of or not even just education just in people and then discrimination and so it's just a shock to them when they realize that uh, well, and in most big gay. companies like mm -hmm. Cinemark's a perfect example right. from the top nobody would consider this is the entertainment industry nobody would consider oh you're gay I don't know if you can work in the entertainment industry <laughs> I mean you know it's like <laughs> But there could be just that one theater manager whose background, you know, started as an usher, worked his way up, became a theater manager, goes to this real right-wing church or uh, was, was raised in a very mm -hmm. bigoted family environment, really honestly in his own heart believes that being gay is wrong. And, you know, we're out here in whatever garland and we just don't want gay people as our ushers here in the theater and would fire somebody. So it's important that it's there from a... Uh, from a corporate level just to say even though corporate wouldn't consider firing somebody for that just to say that's not our policy we don't do that you know, and that's where the problems really it comes in on the lower level usually right. exactly. it's a corporate value and, yeah. and you need to uh, you need to display it and we're finding you know, as the states are taking a long time to do to it, like <coughs> Texas is a great example. You know, cities have been very responsive, and lots of the big cities here in Texas, in Austin, and, and Dallas, and, and Fort Worth, have have put protection in place. And lots, and most of the big you know, Fortune 500 companies, around, I think it's what, 80, per, 80 plus percent, I don't have the exact number, um, have that in place. So it's educating these more medium and small companies of what uh, what the other guys are doing and uh, putting it in place down at the local level. And then hope, and then keep pushing at the state and national level to get these to this in place as well. Well, Dallas, the city of Dallas has had a non-discrimination policy in employment, housing, and public accommodations now for 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, it was May 2002 when that was passed, and one of the ways that we got the votes 13 to 2, which is a great a great mm -hmm. vote at the Horseshoe, um, was to include uh, leaders of major employers. Uh, of citizens of Dallas, mm -hmm. and uh, the the CEO of, of American Airlines came, and of Blockbuster, which w at the time was quite a big deal, um, you know, and those are the ways too, because corporate America has been so far ahead 
of, of our mm -hmm. uh, states and, and federal well, laws. Even in the city of Dallas, when we passed the very first non-discrimination ordinance, and that was an employment non-discrimination ordinance for the city of Dallas itself, um, big debate at the time, and it was led, we had a couple of uh, gay city council people, uh, we had a couple of closeted city council people who we threatened and they voted for. Um, we, we had, um, but we had a mayor who had been a Republican um, representative in Congress, and it was a fairly conservative uh, council that we had at the time. And I remembered the mayor, he was the last vote, and he said, you know, in my company, we don't discriminate. I don't see why the city di should discriminate. I vote yes. And we all went, whoa, because <laughs> we already had our votes. But, you know, but he doesn't discriminate. I mean, here's somebody who, with a very conservative background. Um, he was the person who had the seat that basically is represented by Sam Johnson right now. You know, it, it about as conservative as you can get in Congress. Companies do what's good for companies, and, and it's good for business to have uh, this policy in place. I mean, it's it, you get the best employees, and you get the best uh, work out of them if you um, if you treat everybody equally. Right. Right. And then my company recently, a few years ago, offered domestic partnerships. I work for uh, Farmers Insurance, mm -hmm. insurance side of it. And our home base is Los Angeles, but uh, you know when you get that form and your option is there's domestic partnership. Uh, benefits was was a shock to me because we are a good old type of company, mm -hmm. you know, claim side of it, and so they are moving. And like Bob was saying, it's good for business equality. It's good for business. It's just good it's for just business. You sure, are who you are, and sure. as long as you're doing your great good work. And I think too, a lot of um, a lot of straight people are also looking at the benefits that um, and protections that companies offer when they ch make a choice in employment as well. Um, who they're going to pursue because it says a lot about the company's culture. If those things are in place and it's already there, you know that's like that's a great place to work. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's, you don't see any of it in their employment policies or anything, it's nothing with recognition of um, of LGBT people and protections for mm -hmm. employees. That kind of says a lot to a straight person too about what the culture might be right. at right. at a company. Uh, yeah, we have a minute more to, to go. Uh, there are a number of bills that have been introduced into the legislature this time. Uh, Bob, you said and it, for Lobby Day, what the groups are going to do is go and concentrate on one particular item. Do you know what your item is, Patty? Yes, um, yes, marriage. Oh, you're doing marriage. Okay. Although uh, marriage is in a huge focus. I mean, <clears throat> there's so many other bills that have probably better, far better chances of passing. I, I want to bring up w this wide array of different bills that are uh, that are going to be up this time uh, for consideration. They're, they've all been assigned to committees. Most of them will die in committee, just like the vast majority of all bills introduced into the House and Senate are going to die in committee. But one of the bills is to repeal DOMA and to allow civil unions in the state of Texas. I think that's so important for a number of reasons. One of them is it gives the legislators in Rhode Island and uh, Minnesota and Illinois cover to say, Texas is debating this. Do you want Texas right. to be ahead of us? <laughs> 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 and if it's not debated now, it's never going to be debated. It has to be introduced now. It needs to be introduced next time. The next time it'll get a hearing. The time after that it'll get out of the committee and get to the floor. It'll be debated. That's the way it laws. But the, re the repeal bill has been in since 2005. I mean, since 2007. But it's being talked about seriously right. this time. I mean, time. This, that's part of that trajectory, though, mm -hmm. is that it's been it's been denied even a hearing all these sessions, and now it, it's uh, so. Right. But all of a sudden now they're talking about it. And then it's going to get out of committee, and then it'll get to the floor, and then they're going to vote for it. And that's not right. this session, but that's how the Texas and legislature works. you have multiple works. representatives and senators. Please. You have a Senate bill version of it and a House bill version. So first time that's which happened. First time yes. that happened. Yep. So you're getting it on both houses, which is incredible. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk about the different bills that are up. I mean, it's a whole list here yeah. of different things. Uh, you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink. Our guests today are Saul Reyes from Equality Texas and Bob Shimon from uh, Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas. I'm not used to that name yet. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> it does just roll right off Gallant. the tongue. Gallant. It is Gallantics. Okay, and we'll be back right after this. My grandfather, he loved the boogie. His father, he loved it too. My dad loved the boogie.
Big Bill Morganfield is coming back. That's right. The Son of Muddy Waters in Dallas this Saturday night for a big KNON Blues Benefit event at Fort David's Pub. Big Bill will be playing his father's guitars during this rare Dallas appearance. Get there early. We'll have free barbecue from the Alligator Cafe. Also appearing will be the Super Kings and Susie Q and the Shafts featuring James Hinkle. Join us for this very special blues event. Tickets are available now at knon.org, Bill's Records, and Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie. This Saturday, March 9th, it's Big Bill Morganfield with the Super Kings and Susie Q and the Shafts featuring James Hinkle at Poor David's Pub. And don't forget that free barbecue dinner from the Alligator Cafe. Poor David's Pub is located at 1313 South Lamar in Dallas. We'll see you there. This is a KNON Benefit event. Jim Hightower has moved to be a part of KNON's Speak Up Saturday. Jim Hightower's segments can now be heard at the start of each of KNON's great talk programming starting at 7 a.m. with Reverend Mary and Barnett's show, Church Information and Open Forum, with the news and talk of South Dallas. Then at 9, the CWA presents Workers Beat with the news and talk of the unions hosted by Gene Lance and Bonnie Mathias. At 10, the Dallas Observer presents Get Off My Lawn with Jim Shoots, bringing you the other side of Dallas news. Finishing up Speak Up Saturdays at 11 is Lambda Weekly with the news and talk of the LGBTQ community, hosted by David Taffet, Patty Fink, and Laurent Landis. Now starting at each of these shows is Jim Hightower's insightful segment at 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 a.m. each and every Saturday morning right here on The Voice of the People, KON 89.3 FM. This is Janice McCall from TCU, and I listen to the Lambda Week on 89.3 KNON FM, Dallas. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink. And our guests are Saul Reyes from Equality Texas. He's the vice chair. And Bob Shimon, who is the president of Gallant. X. Yes, we're next. Which is the Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas, formerly known as Collin County Gay and Lesbian Alliance. I think you should have the formally known in there because that will make your title even longer. So definitely be that the formally known as. And actually, this is the this is our first announcement. So you are getting the breaking news here because we just we just uh, <laughs> <laughs> love we got a scoop. We got a scoop. We're still working on our uh, on our uh, final logo and some other some other uh, housekeeping issues and websites. So anybody out there who's good at web design, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was there the night that that Collin County Gay and Lesbian Alliance first formed. Excellent. I was there with Roger Riddell. We came up from the Dallas Gay and Le- mm-hmm. Lesbian Alliance, and we thought that there'd be about 25 people out come, and we put out 25 chairs, and 76 people showed up. That's awesome. So we had stacks of chairs. We were like madly putting the chairs out. Yeah. So many people. Yeah, and up. Patty came back and said, who knew there were 76 gay people in our <laughs> cafe? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we were talking a little bit about the legislation that uh, Monday is lobby day. So, people Correct. are going down in, uh, going to lobby in groups, Collin County Gay and Lesbian Alliance sending down a bus of 56 people. Should be several hundred people, usually, are the number of people that right. lobby. Um, we're talking about some of the bills. Each group that lobbies in groups of like five will go to uh, representatives' um, uh, offices, talk to them about the particular issue. So, what are some of the other bills, um, Saul, that are uh, that have been proposed already, that have been introduced. Uh, right. The other bill is uh, birth certificates. Representative Anchia from Dallas are introducing the birth certificates. A, an alum of our show yeah. many times. <laughs> yes, he's a very good ally for us. And uh, that, al- again, allows that uh, we would be able to pr- uh, have on the supplementary uh, birth certificate for adoptions, uh, both parents, same sex, on there. And again, that is a, a big deal because it allows the parents of the same sex to be able to get a passport to be able to go and register them for school, not have one parent, you know, all these little basic things that... Um, Pick the kid up from school <laughs> if he's sick. I exactly, mean, that, that's exactly. It's just and practical so things. That, that bill has been introduced again. It was introduced in the last session, didn't get out of committee. Uh, hopefully uh, this session we can move further on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an employment non-discrimination bill, and that's what Bob is going to talk about. And we talked a little bit about that. Uh, there's the repeal of 2106. Talk a little bit about that, and that's been introduced for the first time in both houses. Of the marriage, of the uh, uh, 2106, the uh, sodomy, uh, the law. sodomy law. The sodomy law, yeah, yeah, and that's that is just a formality because you know it's been ruled unconstitutional for the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court. So that's been on just to getting the word of the penal code out 
but that homosexual conduct is is not appropriate. You know what's crazy is that um, you know DGLA is very involved in doing um, um, LGBT training and uh, diversity training at the Dallas Police Academy, and we've been there over 20 years now. And um, every set, every time we do a class, we have to show them because they have the penal code right there in right. front of them in hard copy, right. and we have to show them that this is not to be enforced, even though it's still printed in the book and it has little italics underneath with an asterisk that says this right. is not enforceable, it was declared unconstitutional, they still waste ink to print it in the book. Correct. And, you know, people were so fiscally conservative, you know, here's one thing that can, can be right. changed. Right, and there's, it's gotten both supports, Republican <laughs> strategists coming out and saying, yeah, get the language out of there. We just had an incident in El Paso where there was a couple in a restaurant that were that kissed and a police officer was there and said that it was illegal for them to do that. And so obviously he didn't know that, it, or the education and there, by the, the way, it there. never <laughs> was illegal to do yes, that. Right. <laughs> Some of the law is, has exactly. to do with um, sexual conduct, conduct. Mm -hmm. which Correct. does not include kissing. See. Right, so there we go with the uh, the uh, lack of education or the proper training on that. Well, okay. and the bill uh, in the Senate was, yeah, in the Senate was introduced by the senator from El Paso because it cost the city money. These two guys turned around, sued exactly. the police department, and won. Because it, if that officer had really been educated and known that it was unenforceable, but when he sees it in the penal code, you know, he may not continue reading the paragraph to find this, but if it's not there, he can't find it, can he? So, that's you know, correct. That's, right. And, and that's been introduced since 2000, the 2005 session when the, after Lawrence v. Texas in 2003. Right. And it's still, it's still not there. And the thing is, the Texas legislature cleans up the penal code and other laws throughout Texas every session. Because as they change laws, they have to take a verbiage out. And they have usually omnibus bills that go through and sweep, you know, say, let's just get rid of the old stuff and get you know, leave the new stuff. And, and this is not hard. This well, is not and, and like why is there just before. one bill this time? It's because this session apparently there's no omnibus bill. This is this is the thing that needs to get cleaned up Correct. this time. Uh, it, there's a, there's a bill to repeal the superdoma that we put into the Constitution, and allow civil unions. Now we were talking a little bit before. There have been some bills like this before, but this one goes further than those bills ever have before, and it's been introduced into both houses. Exactly. Talk a little bit about that. Well, again, it was the uh, senator from South Texas, I think it's McAllen, and then uh, the Fort Worth representative who put that in, which is, you know, obviously, you know, that's something that Equality Texas is behind in our legislative agenda, and it's just going to be able to show the country, I think just by talking about it and getting this on both houses, to show the country that, you know, Texans are ready uh, to accept that. I mean, and we, we've moved a lot further, even in Texas, than we would assume on that. So that's, again, it's going to be able to have, um, take out the, the, the uh, Defense of Marriage Act and be able to allow uh, same-sex unions. There's one bill called the Romeo and Juliet bill, and this would affect our producer, Clint, uh, a, a <laughs> tremendously. Um, <laughs> what is the Romeo and Juliet The Romeo law? and Juliet law is, uh, if, you know, uh, basically the way it was written was if uh, teenagers, you know, if you had to be over 14 and if you had uh, uh, sexual relationships with someone within the three-year period, it was okay. It had to be consensual. consensual or consensual. <laughs> consensual. <laughs> right. <laughs> and between 14 and three years, so 14 and 17 years. However, it only was there for uh, male and female uh, couples. And so if it was a uh, female, female, male, male couple, that, that older person could be you know, tried as, as a sex offender and have that on the record. So the introduction of this legislation is to make it fair and we include the the, uh, the same sex. So, yeah, so we just equalize everything. Equalize everything. Um, and if, as long as you're within three years, three years. then you couldn't be uh, prosecuted for rape. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, um, there is uh, there are several insurance discrimination bills that are there. W what kind of insurance discrimination? It's is really going just on? all all the gamut of it. Basically, just to introduce that uh, you cannot uh, discriminate any kind of like insurance rates, insurance. Uh, you know, you know, if you're looking at the different areas or just rating for uh, 
including sexual orientation. They just put it into law, just mm -hmm. adding that, that terminology in there. I have a great example. People say, you know, insurance discrimination, what difference does it make? I used to have a company, we had a store on Cedar Springs, 75219 zip code, but we had an office uh, in the 7520, I think, 4 zip code uh, outside of Oaklawn. And um, so we had insurance for our employees. The rates in 75219 were through the roof. So we gave our corporate address three blocks away, and the rates were half. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Right. And really why? Amazing. Because it was those kinds of people, obviously. Um, <laughs> well, and we don't, we don't uh, realize everyone has to have insurance, and then there's still a lot of discrimination in, insur in mm -hmm. insurance. You know, I'm coming from the insurance field, and I can see not only just... Uh, and your job is you're in charge of discrimination no. <laughs> to see where you can uh, <laughs> jack up the rates? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it, it, t talk about insurance. Uh, you know, we were talking just before the show, and my house was broken into. Right. Okay, so we have a deductible on homeowners insurance. Uh, so it, it was over our deductible, high deductible. The insurance company comes back and says, no, 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 those were the retail prices. Uh, we're going to cut those prices in half. So my $2,000 deductible becomes a $4,000 deductible. We're getting nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a different conversation. Yeah, depreciation. That wasn't discrimination. That was just that was you depreciation. Wanted, you they do that to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Equally. I, that, that, is, that is equal. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, and, and here's where um, it wasn't equal. Oh, is he a tenant of yours? Mm -hmm. No, we live together. Right. No, you probably need two different policies there. I've never had two policies. Right. That's amazing. Uh huh. And, well, and that's why you have even with your auto insurance, and I'm going to go a little bit more into insurance. But you know, putting sexual orientation in there, and if we are able to get some sort of civil union, you don't have to have two policies because when you are, you can have both each other on each. You can have both of you on the same policy with having two separate policies because normally won't write. Uh, policy together because you're not legally married mm -hmm. in the insurance industry and that affects your rates I mean that is kind of something that uh, the insurance industry but talk about a cost if I had to have my yeah. own separate whatever policy renters policy I don't know what it would be you would, it's a tenant exactly uh, uh, for, for just two of us having a house because we're not married what are you absolutely out of your minds right. my answer to the insurance agent was bring it on right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want to you want to go fight that fight uh -huh. right. w w I'll, I'll, I'm up for it right and there's like there's multiple and they figured out a way that we could both be on oh you're on the same police report hmm isn't that interesting yeah. right. I, mm. right and so we're hoping that these bills there's several bills that are introduced in the insurance industry to to eliminate that right. sort of but seriously talk about a discrimination there if I had to have my own policy because we weren't married in in the Texas sense, um, that would be how much five hundred dollars a year extra that I would have to pay just because I wanted to have my house insured. And then if you have your auto insurance on the same policy, you could have you know if you're married or you have a partner, you have um, uh, multi card discounts and all other discounts that you get because because you're um, acknowledged to be married. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't get those, you're, you're costing you even more on, on that front too. Right. 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 There, I mean, there, there are lots of little ones like that, like um, renting a car with somebody until they fixed it. Um, it used to be, oh, well, no, if you're not married, two of you can't rent the car together without paying an extra fee, but you could rent the car together if you don't. And, mm -hmm. oh, for insurance, if you're married, it's one insurance fee. But, uh, you know, and I've said many times at an insurance, at, at a rental car counter, fine, but he's driving it and I'm not paying it and I'm not putting him on the the policy so if that's right. how you want it fine but I'm not paying you extra well we Aaron and I are recounted many years ago we had gone to the Avis counter in New Orleans um, and they were one of the first ones to actually fix it finally they, they did and yeah. the, the guy at the counter said marriage by contract in Louisiana <laughs> and he married us right there because we were signing the contract together <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, we were so proud <laughs> there's one other bill though uh, that's before the um, Legislature, and this is the University Domestic Partnerships. Tell us what Correct. that is. Correct. Uh, uh, that's House Bill 1140. That's relating to the authority of certain universities to provide benefits to certain qualified individuals, and that's how they are wording that. It's qualified individuals. So 
the big debate was University of Texas and Texas A&M system allowing uh, domestic partnership, but now it's going to be qualified individuals. So they broader, general, and inclusive everyone, and which is, I think is fantastic. This has come up before it came up last session. It was a vicious debate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just really nasty. And um, the thing is, the way the law reads, dating back to when the other side of the house, the other side of the aisle ran the house, University of Texas and A&M uh, are required to offer benefits that are comparable to the other top 20 systems in the country. There are two systems that don't offer domestic partner benefits right now. Guess which ones they are. <laughs> Texas and A&M. Uh -huh. uh, so of the top 20 right. systems in the country right now, those are the only two that don't. Right. So actually, by law, they're required to offer those benefits, except <laughs> it's been blocked by the legislature right, right. to enforce their own law. Right. And, and I guess then this really, the wording, it's still in the wording in this session is certified, cert, certified, or certain qualified individuals. So. Well, it, it, and that's in order to dis distinguish, or so that they can decide, is it going to be all domestic partners? Is it just going to be same-sex domestic partners? Uh, and that's where the debate always comes in. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, and, and the amount that it usually costs a company or a uh, do you know what it costs your company it's usually minimal it's less than, I believe that it was less than two percent on the additional premiums the company pays typically mm -hmm. and that's because that, most of that comes from um, opposite sex partners who take uh, who sign up also for, for um, the benefits so it's only it's even a, it's just a fraction of, of that two percent is actually from same-sex couples you, DART is having this discussion yes. right now about adding and it was real interesting listening to their discussion and they're doing everything they can or, let me reword that. The suburban uh, representatives are doing everything they can to delay implementing this. And it's going to get implemented. But they're doing everything they can. Thank you, Plano. Thank you very much, Carland. Um, <laughs> uh, those were the two leaders. In, yes, in and, my, and I had a conversation with our, with our uh, director from, from Plano a couple of days before the vote, and he told me he was uh, very supportive. So yeah. I was a little surprised to hear his. Uh, uh, so uh, they're discussing it, and they're self insured like most large companies are. So they're saying, so what is this actually? This is what the premiums are going to be, but this is just an actuarial question. What's it really going to cost, Dart? Let's say somebody who's a domestic partner has cancer. What's it going to cost? That's the point, though. What the premiums are, if you're self-insured, covers you. That's the point of being uh, of premiums, <laughs> and, right. and especially being self-insured, right. if you've actuarially figured it out correctly, the premiums cover the payouts, and if it's a little bit high one year, so your rates go down. If it's a little bit low, then, then your rates go up a little bit. But unless you had a, you know, a real whack job figuring out your rates, that's what it's called. And they spent an hour, and they delayed the vote because they couldn't figure out what it was really going to cost them. Yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't it's matter. minimal. It's yeah, it yeah, we should matter. We should only let people have two children you know, on their benefit plan, and that's it. After that, you know, the rest are uninsured. I mean, th do companies debate that? Do, bus do, 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 do businesses debate that? No. The question I always ask is, how many gay people do you hire in order to keep your insurance rates down? Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, because they're basically diluting their their costs. That, that's exactly what they're exactly. they're doing. If you have to um, put you know wives on the policy and husbands <laughs> on the policy, and then your kids, that's where the rates start going up. You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm David Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink, and our guests are Saul Reyes from Equality Texas. He's the vice chair of that very fine organization, and Bob <laughs> Shimon, who is the president of the newly named Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas. We'll be back with more Lambda Weekly right after this. Would you help a word to burn? This is Sonny Boy Mark, and I'd like to take a minute here to tell you about over 60 minutes of great blues listening available now on KNON's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 Blues CD. This is some great stuff, folks. 15 tracks from Two Tones, Blues Boy Bo, Betty Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Collie, Johnny Red and the Roosters, the Chris Watson Band, the Rough Cut Blues Band, Jeff Stone with Charlie Love, David Millsap, Sir Loin and the Ass Kicking Machine, 
Boogie, Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band, and JJ and the Detonators. The thousand copies we made are selling fast, and we won't reissue it. Get yours now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records and Rewind Music. The CD is available as a download at cdbaby.com. All proceeds benefit KNON, sponsored by Forever Young Records. Vinyl copies available at Forever Young Records only. For more info on Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, visit knon.org. Your ears been bending for some blues? Well, feed them the real thing with Texas Blues Radio Volume 5. Want to find out about upcoming events at KNON? Want to see pictures from past events or need information about the station? Then you need to like the official KNON Facebook page. It's easy to find. Just go to facebook.com slash KNON893. It's the KNON 89.3 FM station produced page for Facebook. It's the easiest way to keep up with what's going on here at KNON. Like us and share with your friends today. That's facebook.com slash KNON893. Except no substitutions. This is William, your videographer for the KNON talk shows. You can watch Lambda Weekly by going to the KNON.org website. Click on schedules to the left side of your screen. Choose Lambda Weekly's page. Scroll to the bottom of that page. Then choose your favorite show to watch or download. This show will be ready for viewing by lunchtime Tuesday. Have a great day. This is Kimberly Trax of the GLBT Wedding Expo, and you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON-FM. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly, uh, the oldest, longest-running gay and lesbian radio talk show anywhere in the world, coming up on our 30th anniversary. I'm Dave Taffet, and I'm here in the studio with Patty Fink, and our guests are Saul Reyes from Equality Texas and Bob Shimon from the former Collin County Gay and Lesbian Alliance, now known as the Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas. <laughs> and that whole thing is their new name. Yes. <laughs> We're going to add a few more words in there, too. We haven't decided yet. It'll be a sentence. <laughs> Um, we were just talking about Lobby Day coming up on Monday and how many of us are going. Um, and you can still sign up. You can go where? Well, actually, you cannot. It closed yes. Friday. Uh, it was uh, the last day to be able But what we encourage people to do, if you're not able to attend, is to call a representative on Monday. It's, you know, statewide. If you can't attend, please call your representative on Monday. And you can go to our website at qualitytexas.org. Look at all these issues we just talked about. All the But some people aren't going to show up. So if you just show up at Yeah, the, you might uh, be able to show up and get there it, in Austin. It's the yeah. Methodist Church? It's, yes, United Methodist Church on Lavacus near the Capitol it's there. It's a block to the, to the Capitol, facing yeah. the Capitol. It's to the right. left, one, right. one block. Right. So, and, and great place. That's where all of the protests are staged. Right. right. It's a great <laughs> church. We love that church. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the... Um, uh, there was an AIDS um, and HIV uh, advocacy day this past Monday. That's where they met. There's a, uh, you know, they do a senior citizens one. They they just do all kinds of great stuff from that church. But they really do. Um, there's uh, you were saying uh, trans hate crimes are also being introduced. Right, um, and we've done this every every session. And again, the Texas legislature only meets every other year, uh, so right. 140 days. So. Yeah. We don't get many opportunities, <laughs> so it's uh, only in odd years that we get to um, to lobby our legislators while they're considering bills. So <clears throat> um, every year since 2001, when Texas passed the uh, James Byrd Jr. hate crimes law in Texas, mm -hmm. uh, that included um, protections for based on hate on, on uh, sexual, sexual orientation. orientation. Yeah. Okay. It did not include anything. Um, with regard to gender identity and expression. And so every session since 2001, we've tried to get that added. Um, and so that's up again um, this time. And federally, um, in the James Byrd um, Jr. Hate Crimes Act, we have that protection. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's so interesting, too, if you look across the 50 states and the federal government, too, we kind of have a, a typical progression. We start with some sort of hate crimes protections um, and the, the they can't kill us kind of law. Right. And then it sort of begins with employment non-discrimination, mm -hmm. um, which is sort of where we're stuck in Texas, you know, yeah. and federally, too. Mm -hmm. Except there's some, some sort of, you know, we had the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, so that's sort of an employment non-discrimination, sort of. But we don't have it federally either. And then there begins to be some other things like housing, public accommodations, other things that take place. And then we finally get some relationship recognition. 
And that seems to be the path across any state that's already at marriage equality <coughs> that's taken that same path in that order. So we're we're hoping that we can overcome this this time, get get our hate crimes law complete, and we can Including. move forward and maybe even get some headway on you know, and, employment. And I've heard people argue, you know, well, wh why do we care about whether or not gender identity is in there? When it comes to discrimination now, most discrimination against gay people is because of the way that you're perceived. Patty, if you're considered too masculine, or um, Saul, if you were considered too feminine, and that's really gender identity. It has nothing to do right. with your actual sexual orientation. It's the way you present yourself. So we want those in there to protect gay and exactly. lesbian people as well as transgender people. And trans right. people have so. an, an, an inordinate, ungodly right. amount of hate. And to, at them. and to protect straight people who don't happen to meet the right. the stereotype, and there are lots of those too. Right. In addition to that bill, there, uh, uh, Representative Coleman introduced <coughs> the gender markers on birth certificates right. for transgender to be able yeah. to do that, and they may not require to have the surgery to be in order to do that. So mm -hmm. now you have to have the surgery to get your driver's license uh, uh, changed. changed over, and so before that you have to live as the as your ch your sex, the other sex, and uh, still have your driver's license of, of your prior mm -hmm. identification. So. Equality Texas recently did a new poll, uh, and, and it was just asking people based on a number of items, how do you feel about these things? The number one thing, it's been the number one for, um, and they're comparing 2013 to 2010. It's been number one, but it even moved stronger. Guaranteed right to visit your partner in the hospital is number one. I find that one interesting that that's the number one thing. It went from 88% support to almost 91% support, went from 10% against to a real hardcore 7.2% who's, uh, who's now against having that right. And this is a polling of Texas voters, right? It's a polling right. of Texas so all voters. All demographics, all um, background. How is this poll done? Do you know? It's, uh, I, ke I keep forgetting the name of the company. Gl Gang Gariff does. Uh -huh. we, we hire a company to do, oh, okay. the, do uh -huh. it for us. And they do the polling. And like I said, they do they have the questions and demographics, religious background, variety, and uh, ethnicities. And, and it's broken up in percentage. If you go to our website, you can see the full poll. And they'll have links in there. And you can look at the, the distinction of where certain in rural areas versus the urban areas, how, how all they the voted, all the cross tabs. So yeah. it's, 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 it was just incredible results that we had. For, and we were very happy from 2010 where a majority of our, of, of the questions or one of the legislative items was over 50%. There was a few like, the marriage. The only two that didn't were marriage. Marriage. But now even there are two marriage questions. One of those pushed above 50%. Right. It union. was should Texas recognize same-sex marriages, not civil unions, marriages, marriages that are, um, done in another state. It was 48%, it's now 52% Correct. who are in favor. It was 46% against, it's now 43% against. So the, the against have gone down. Mm -hmm. um, I guess some of those moved into the unsure and uh, some of the unsures moved into the sure, why not? The only one that's below 50% uh, still is allow gays and lesbians to get married in Texas was 42%, it's now 48% almost, 47.9. <laughs> what about the brink, though? No, not That's, a couple of years? Well, yeah, yeah. Over 50 well recognizing from other states, then maybe the state won't fall off into the ocean if we do them right. here. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we should just allow them to do it in Houston and we'll see if that part of the state falls <laughs> off. And if not, it, you know, we could bring it up I-45 <laughs> a little bit. Um, it, but the number of people who are against I'm wondering if 7.2% think that we should, our relationships should be recognized for hospital visits. Um, the other one that went way up is guaranteed right to make end-of-life medical decisions, and those that goes hand in hand. That went from 75% supporting to 80% supporting. That was a, that's a big healthy jump. Well, that's more and more people who really are recognizing our relationships, isn't it? Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, these results are just, uh, when we get with, with Lobby Day and we're talking to a representative, and like I said, you can get these results on our website. You can present these numbers because a lot of times the representatives just assume, well, you know, they're not, these type of people want to support these issues. But that's why we're doing these polls at each set, at each, each odd year for the legislative session to go in there with what we call our ammunition or support because you can, you can't, you know, go against this poll. I mean, it's basically Texans saying yes, we we are uh, for this, 
and so that that's why I believe in when we go in there when we have when you guys are in lobby day and you you have your assigned thing you've got your your, your toolkit to go to it's, it's just and we have the poll numbers to support us and that's really uh, what lobbying is really about. Yeah. You have to convince your legislator not only that it's the right thing to do, but that they have some sort of cover. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really the bottom line here. They want to be able to tell their constituents when they're up for re-election again why they voted a certain way on things. And if, if they're voting with us on something, they better have a, a, a good reason in a, in a hostile, an LGBT hostile district. To, to say, well, I, I did this for this very logical reason. And, <laughs> right. you know okay. what I mean? And so that's what they're really looking for. And we have to, we're there to provide that, supply that. And when we say 80% of Texans support this, you should too. You know, the, that's a great way for them to say, oh, okay. The, the, the other thing was they have some experience voting for something that was perceived as benefiting the gay and lesbian community. Even though the law, the um, bullying bill did not specify gay and lesbian, it's seen as this gay issue. Mm -hmm. um, the whole Senate voted for it. Nobody was voted out because of it. They lived. Exactly. Right. They all lived. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting, too, about the, the hospital visitation because it's now a federal directive, executive order from the President of the United States, that we be allowed to visit our partners in the hospital in any hospital that receives well, federal funding. And it's only 7.2 who are against it. I know. Those are people who are going to be against it. Anything that says anything gay in it, you know, I don't care that you have a partner, uh, die alone. Uh, I don't care about you're making end of life decisions. I, I think the reason on that one, that one might have gone up is, oh, end of life decisions, you know, the person might die quicker. Hmm, yeah, maybe, okay, go ahead and make this decision. But um, the one that didn't move at all that's kind of interesting, it was already up there at 75% is employment non-discrimination. Now, the number that were against it went down, but the number that were for it didn't go up. Do, how do you interpret that? And, and maybe, Bob, how do you interpret that one, being in business and... It's kind of hard to, to understand why it why wouldn't see the same growth in that area. But I think people just expect that it's already there. And um, and almost it's a non-issue. I can't, I'm, I can't believe that we spend time talking to politicians and business leaders up in, in Collin County about this issue because it seems like it's just... Uh, it's just it should be something that's already in place. It's, uh, it's such a no-brainer. It really is. Well, yeah, you know, I think the 1% that went down, they're probably, their new attitude is, oh, okay, <laughs> 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 not for it, but <sighs> I'll live with it. It, it. Because it really doesn't affect them other than they have to work with people who aren't fearing for their jobs, and I would think that would be more pleasant. Well, I think, I think it's really interesting t that w the Lawrence t decision came down in 2003. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, I mean, I, my memory is not so gone at, this, at my age now that I don't remember this at all, but we were considered criminals mm -hmm. in the state of Texas. We were considered by our very existence to be criminals. And there was a move, you know, saying, well, criminals can't teach school, can't, criminals can't do this or do that. And so we were criminals. I mean, th and suddenly that was gone. Yeah. And so I, I think it's extraordinary that um, our fellow Texans are where they are even today, because they weren't there in 2005 well, when this right. became mm -hmm. an issue for the, the, the Prop 2 ban right. in our Constitution. But talking, look how far they've moved. Talking about some of the other bills, there's one to allow um, partnership benefits for university uh, employees. It, that's 65% are, are supporting that, only 27% are against. How is voting against that bill a winning strategy for any politician? It, it just isn't, is right. it? Right, no, it's just, it's just uh, well, I don't want to say pandering, but <laughs> it's just it's going to appease the Kathy Adams appease, and their districts. Uh, the, <laughs> some, maybe some of their, uh, their uh, more vocal constituents, yeah. I would say, yeah. and that's why it's important for us as a community uh, or anyone to mm -hmm. really get on the phone and, and call if you can't visit them because it's it's not that um, intimidating of a process. Very friendly. I had to go. My first assignment when I went to lobby day was to go to um, uh, Mr. Craddock's office, you know, and he was, mm -hmm. but you know, very welcoming. Sat with us for ten minutes. Uh, Cause Stafford did. <laughs> Do you know that <laughs> is one thing so, I want to emphasize before lobby day yeah. is 
it's okay to go talk to um, Mary Gonzalez. Yes. Real sweet. If you have a chance while you're down there, go meet her. I love Mary to mm -hmm. death. She's going to come on our show one of these. If you happen to see her, pin her down for a date, Patty. I will. I will. But it's really, but she's going to vote with us. She proposed some of this legislation yes. and is co authoring <coughs> some of it. Um, go and speak to some of your Republican representatives, mm -hmm. either yours or in. Right. I went to one, he represents Waxahachie. You would think that that's not really the most con uh, the most liberal area, and we were talking about lobbying, and he really wanted to know what goes on in schools that uh, th that this is necessary. And some of these people that I was with gave him some stories and told him about what what goes on, and he voted with us. And you know, I think a lot of people don't don't really realize that. I mean, there are kind of like these rules of thumb, sort of, so to speak, with letters to the editor, for example. Someone writes a letter to the editor that represents a hundred people, you know, in yes. general that right. that right. think that way and feel that way. But someone took the time to write, and the more people who write, obviously, that's hundreds of people. Speak and the same one with lobbying. If you step forward or you make that call to your legislator, that's it's like a hundred people. Mm -hmm. Um, who didn't make a call, but they feel that way. Mm -hmm. And so the more calls they get and the more visits they get in their office, if they're constantly hearing about this from people who care about these issues, um, that's the way things change. That's the way they think, because that's what they think about when they go to vote for, on these issues. But employment non-discrimination isn't going to cost anybody anything to not fire people. Mm -hmm. No. Right. It, you know, speaking of letters to the editor, some guy named Bill Clinton wrote a little letter to the editor the other he day. He did. He wrote, a, <laughs> he wrote a little letter to the editor um, of the Washington Post yesterday. And um, it's, I love this. It says, the writer is the 42nd president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to identify him in case right. people don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, it's entitled, It's Time to Overturn DOMA. And he, he really... Um, did a massive mea culpa and said it was very wrong. Um, I'll just quote one thing from it. Um, when I signed the bill, I included a statement with the admonition that, quote, enactment of this legislation should not, despite the fierce and at times divisive rhetoric surrounding it, be understood to provide an excuse for discrimination, end quote. Reading for those words today, I know now that even worse than providing an excuse for dis discrimination, the law is itself discriminatory. It should be overturned. And so he's, he spends his whole editorial space um, um, calling for the, the overturn of, of DOMA, that this was a mistake. We need yeah. to undo it and move <coughs> forward. And I, I think that's just extraordinary. He was the president who signed this bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a powerful statement um, that, it's, that it's wrong, that it needs to go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, thank you, President Clinton. Yes, yes. thank you. <laughs> and um, Bob, what are you looking forward to now with Lobby Day? I mean, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to go see our, our representatives in Texas, and, and even if it's their staff, you know, it, it's just as powerful because those are really the people that are that are guiding them and making it, uh, making letting them know what their constituents are thinking. And um, it's important to be counted. People make decisions, and, and, and these polls show that it's association with people who are out and gay who. Are their friends mm -hmm. who all of a sudden they say that that's not so different, and and it's really really important it's those those individual one on one you know connections that you make that allow people to um, to change. Uh, Saul, how many people are you expecting on Monday? It should be about four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Oh, yes. that'll be a record. Yes. And if you can't yes. go, call your legislator and say I wanted to be there. Exactly. And I'm calling instead. Yes. And, 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 and that's session. a way. To, that <laughs> is a way to do it. Yes. I want to thank you both for being here on Lambda Weekly, and uh, we will be back with more Lambda Weekly next week. Thanks for being here. <laughs>
KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.